Norma Pfeiffer was the youngest person to get her PhD at the University of Chicago, and she did it before women even had the right to vote. She was a botanist. She studied plants. And on one warm September afternoon in 1912, Norma ventured out to the south side of Chicago to collect samples of moss. Norma spotted something glistening in the grass, a little tiny speck of silver amongst the green. What botany student wouldn't investigate? She'd never seen anything like it before. Small, clear, but obviously a plant, no bigger than the eraser on the tip of a pencil. What was it? Norma didn't know, but she knew people who might. None of her colleagues had ever seen such a thing. Norma headed to North Dakota, her packed plant samples in tow. For the next few years, Norma studied the plant. Every summer, she'd go back and collect more samples, her thesis for her Ph.D. forming in her mind. Though she didn't know it at the time, she soon figured out that she had discovered a new plant that day back in 1912. She dubbed her discovery Thysmia Americana, an unusual little thing with its closest relatives being the fairy lanterns of Australia and New Zealand. Thysmia isn't green like most plants. Plants are green because they contain chlorophyll, a substance that turns sunlight into something plants can use to grow. The process of changing light into food is called photosynthesis. Chlorophyll is green because rays from the sun are blue and red, and that's what the chlorophyll needs to absorb. It doesn't absorb green light rays and instead bounces them back, which is why humans see plants as green. Our eyes absorb those green light rays. But Thysmia americana was special. It didn't use the sun's rays to grow like most plants because it lives almost completely underground. Norma found out that Thysmia lived off the fungi that grew on its roots. That's why Thysmia was clear. It didn't need the chlorophyll to absorb light. She continued to go back to the same spot for several summers, collecting samples, cataloging them, and finding out everything she could about the strange little plant. In 1916, when Norma went back to collect more samples, there was a barn where Thysmia had previously grown. No one has ever seen the plant since.